Hi guys, today I'm here with my April reading wrap up. April was by far the best reading month I have had so far in 2019, not just because of the number of books I read, but because of the quality of books I read. I really enjoyed reading in April. I couldn't stop doing it. It was kind of turning into a bit of a problem because all I wanted to do was read, but I read so many good books and I've been really looking forward to sharing them with you. So I'm gonna do something a bit different with this reading wrap up and I'm gonna start by sharing with you my top three books of the month. The first one I want to show you is just the best. It's one of my all-time favourite books now. It's so amazing and it is The Morning Gift by Eva Ibbotson. You may have seen in my March reading wrap-up that I read Magic Flutes by Eva Ibbotson and I really fell in love with her writing. And then I went to Bologna at the start of April. I was really nervous because it was the first time I had taken an aeroplane by myself and I was just, I felt so sick and I felt awful. And I knew that I needed to read a book that I was going to love. And just something about this book just drew me into it and I knew that this was going to be the perfect book to read and I was not wrong. I couldn't stop thinking about it the entire time I was in Bologna. I couldn't wait to get the flight back so I could have uninterrupted reading time. I fell head over heels in love with this book. This is one of Eva Ibbotson's adult novels and it's about a girl called Ruth who is living in Austria at the time of the Anschluss when Austria was annexed and she has to enter into a marriage with a man called Quinn in order to get her to safety in England. You know when you get those perfect fan fiction tropes? I feel like the fake marriage trope is one of the best. Like it's, it's like the fake romance fake marriage trope and this was a, not a super tropey book but it had so many elements to it that I loved. I love Eva Ibbotson's protagonist so Ruth is I think my favourite of her protagonists so far. She's really intelligent and loves reading about animals and nature in particular. She is a child and is reading about the sex lives of certain animals and she also is super caring. She really cares about the people she's around and there is one scene in this book where she is walking along the street um, at the university she attends and she hears this bleating noise and it is a sheep in one of the science labs and she goes down and starts reading poetry to this laboratory sheep and I think that says a lot about Ruth's character. There was just so much about this book that I love that I I'm actually really disappointed in myself that I can't fully articulate it. But I think that Eva Ibbotson's novels are the perfect cure if you're feeling a bit down, if you're feeling a bit worried or anxious about anything like I was about flying. She puts you at ease. I think that's the best way of putting it. And you know how her books are going to end. You know they're going to end in this happily ever after. But there are so much seriousness throughout her novels that you actually don't mind. She has this perfect balance. I, I feel like perfect is the perfect adjective to describe any of her books and I would just insist that all of you read at least one of her books and I think that The Morning Gift would be a great place to start. Hands down the book of the month for me. The second book I really really loved and couldn't stop thinking about in April was Howard's End by E.M. Forster. I'd previously read A Room with a View and whilst I liked it it didn't quite stun me in the way that I hoped that it would but I think that I had that reaction to it because I was waiting to read Howard's End and let me tell you this is pretty much my perfect classic. I never never really felt like I loved Edwardian literature because you all know how much I love Victorian classics but I had been waiting for this book. There was something about it that I read it in that moment and I sped my way through it. I read this book so quickly. This is about three groups of people who are part of three different classes. The main characters I suppose are the Schlegels. They are kind of in the middle and the Schlegels are Margaret and her sister Helen as well as their brother Tibby but Margaret and Helen are the main focus of the book. Then you also have the Rich Wilcoxes who consist of Mrs Wilcox, Mr Wilcox and their sons. And then on the other end of the scale you have the Basts. And what E.M. Forster does in Howard's End is use this concept of only connect. So you have the three families and they represent three different classes, they represent three different ideals and he connects them through different 
events and different actions that each character undertakes. It's very complicated and I didn't fully understand it until I had read the novel when it all becomes clear. It's very difficult to 100% like any of the characters. But that's also what makes it so brilliant because what Ian Forster is doing is taking a snapshot in the lives of these characters and he is creating their lives but creating it in a much bigger system so you know that they represent something and are speaking for their class and their gender and also about their circumstances and lives. They're also talking about the difference in generations. So Mr Wilcox represents an older generation than Margaret and Margaret represents a different generation than her older aunt. All the characters are connected, all the events are connected and you need to read this book to find out what it's about for yourself because I have not explained it in a very good way but I've explained it in the only way possible unless you've read it and you'll know hopefully what I'm talking about. It is one of the best books I've ever read and I just want to read all the E.M. Forster now. I'm a little wary that I won't enjoy any of his other books as much as I have loved this but we'll have to see. I'm hoping that I will love something just as much, maybe even more. And then the other book that I super duper loved in April was I Captured the Castle by Dodie Smith. This is a book that I had previously tried to read and couldn't really get past the first chapter because I didn't like it but I I read it at the right time this time and it really captured my imagination. I Capture the Castle is the diary of Cassandra Mortman and you follow her through a period in her life when a lot is changing. She has a very eccentric family and these new people have moved in nearby and they have captured the Mortman sisters imagination and captured their romantic side. It has the iconic first line, I write this sitting in the kitchen sink and I think for me the best thing about this was Cassandra's voice shining through in every word. It is a perfectly crafted novel and it feels like quite a long novel but it was another one that I raced straight through and could not put down. One of my favourite things about it is the way that Cassandra loves writing and she also loves reading. So there's lots of bookish references in here which is something I really love. I love spotting a book that I've read and that Cassandra loved just as much as I did and even though she is a fictional character, I feel like she is real in some way. And I feel like there was something about this that was really endearing and really charming, but at the same time really made me think. So in some ways I think that there are easy ways to criticise this. The way that the Mortmans live is in genteel poverty, so they have a lot but it seems like they have very little. And I think that, that can be quite uncomfortable to read at times because you know that there are people out there who literally have nothing. And here are the Mortmans living in their castle and associating with rich people. But I feel like what I Capture the Castle lacks in self-awareness it makes up for in other areas. In particular, I really liked the open ending, how it feels like you can make your own ending up. There is enough closure, but at the same time, you wonder where Cassandra is going to go in life. And there was a particular moment in the book that I really loved, where Cassandra talks about how she closes her eyes or thinks when she's going throughout her day about how book characters getting on and how they are living after the book has ended which is something that I do and hadn't really noticed I do or hadn't really been made aware of so I'm always thinking and imagining how book characters are getting on what is Elizabeth Bennet doing now how was her life when she married Mr Darcy what is Jane Eyre doing what would the ghosts of Cathy and Heathcliff be like in a modern setting these are questions that I ask myself on an almost daily basis from book to book and I really loved the way that Cassandra got what it was like to be a bookworm. That's why I love this book so much because it felt like in a way Cassandra was me and I was Cassandra. That is the magic of I Capture the Castle. On to some more books now and one book I really enjoyed was Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This has been made into a film starring Frances McDormand and Amy Adams which I haven't watched yet but when I posted that I was reading this on Instagram lots of you asked me if I had watched it and I haven't yet but I would really like to now that I I have read the book. This is a Cinderella style book about a day in the life of a woman who is supposed to be going for a job interview but turns up to the wrong job interview after a mistake and then lives this extravagant lifestyle all in one day. Miss Pettigrew is our main character and she is described in the book as being very old. In fact she's not really that old at all but in this society 
anything over 25 years old basically. She is a governess and has been around lots of families who she really hates. She's gone for this job and she turns up on the doorstep of Miss LaFosse who is a singer. She is almost like a socialite. She lives this amazing lifestyle which is funded by her many lovers and she has all these lovers coming through throughout the day which is something that Miss Pettigrew has never had, never had any experience of. I think it's a book about letting your true self shine through and being given the opportunity to shine. Miss Pettigrew was the kind of character that I just wanted to take and love and hug and so it is a very clever book that I think tells us a lot about who we are as humans and how generous we can be. It's published by Persephone Books and is one of their most popular novels and I love this. I think if you're looking for something to read over the summer that is going to keep you enthralled and is going to make your heart sing you need to read Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. Back in the autumn I read Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery and this year I wanted to read some more of her books so I read the second book in the series which is called Anne of Avonlea. Unfortunately I did not love this one as much as I loved Anne of Green Gables. I really wanted to and I feel like it had the same elements in the book but that was the problem. I felt like this was way too similar for the first book to me. I feel like there was the same events going on they were just slightly different and I wanted to love this as much as I loved Anne of Green Gables and I really liked it. I love the writing style, I can't fault that but in terms of the events in the book and the progression and makes I feel like I just didn't like it the same and I was so upset about this. So for those of you who don't know Anne of Green Gables follows an orphan called Anne and in the first book and moves to Green Gables and gets into lots of mischief and has this wild imagination that gets her into lots of trouble. In this book we meet two new characters who go to live at Green Gables, Dora and Davy, and I really felt like Ellen Montgomery and Anne favoured Davy and just let him get away with anything, things that Anne would never have got away with, and then ignored Dora and saw her as this super boring character who was just a goody goody. And I hated that. And there was also this new character called Paul who Anne just loved because he was like her and he was so boring. I feel like she just got the characters completely wrong in this book and I wanted to love it and I still feel great about Anne. I love Anne but I felt like she was a bit boring in this book too because I feel like she has the pressure to grow up and that gets rid of some of the magic. The magic in these books is Anne's naivety about some things but her witticisms about other things and that was kind of lost in this book. I feel like this is a book that falls prey to second book syndrome. It is the boring second book and I'm hoping that the third book Anne of the Island will be far better and will have more going on in it that is different to the first and second book. I'm sorry that I didn't love this. I'm kind of just going to ignore its existence and read the next book and hope that it's better but I loved Anne of Green Gables. This just didn't do it for me. One of the books that I featured in my classics I want to read in 2019 video was The Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right but in my last video I pronounced it Sabato and I was told that that was wrong so please do tell me if I'm getting it right this time. Here was a fascinating Argentinian author and I'm loving reading more classics in translation this year. This is a really intense book and I started it in January and finished it in April because I had to put it down in between because this is told from the perspective of a man who has murdered this woman who he has been obsessed with and you're reading about this obsession knowing that he has killed her and it is just a mind-blowing book to read because he is trying to tell you why he was right in murdering her and he has no remorse whatsoever for what he has done. I read this not knowing if any of it was real. The only real thing that you know has happened is that he is in prison for murdering this woman. This woman who has seen his artwork and somehow sees into his soul and he tracks her down and stalks her and it's this game of is it real, is it not real? And that's also the game that he's going through in his head. He doesn't trust anything she says but at the same time I'm not sure if I trust anything he says because you know that he's killed someone, how do you trust anything he says? It's the ultimate book for the unreliable narrator. You can't trust anything Juan Pablo Castell 
Bill says, and I don't think you should trust him. I think that that is what this book is about. It's about trusting people and not trusting people. It's about being kind of drawn into his game. It's finding the charm in what he's saying but knowing that you shouldn't find him charming, knowing that that's part of the game that he is playing. It's just amazing. It's intense but really worth a read and I would say to read it. It's the kind of book that you might need to take your time with. It's a short book but it took me a long time and that's what I needed to do to get through this book. I love this style of book so if you've read anything else by him or you've read any other Argentinian literature I'd love to know your recommendations because I'd love to read more now. I haven't really read any poetry this year so I wanted to read some in April and I decided to read Dreamwork by Mary Oliver. She wasn't really a poet I'd heard about until she died earlier this year and so I bought this and I bought some of her non-fiction as well and I've decided to read it. I'm not really sure what I think about this. It takes me a while to get into poetry. There was definitely some poems that I really liked and specific lines and stanzas that I enjoyed. But on the whole, I'm not really sure if this is the style of poetry that I love. Probably an anomaly in the poetry that I love in that lots of people love modern poetry but don't like older poetry. Where I'm like, give me all the romantic poetry, give me Victorian poetry, that is what I love. And so I find this style of American poetry quite difficult to read. I'm kind of conflicted. I'd really recommend it if you like modern poetry. If you like something with a bit more form and structure and like older style poetry, then I don't know, it's, it's worth a read. But for me, it just didn't quite get me going, yes, this is amazing. I'm gonna go back to it and revisit it and I'll probably talk about it again in a dedicated poetry video. But on the whole, my thoughts are a bit take it or leave it. I then want to talk to you about a book that I sadly DNF'd during April. This is a book that I had tried to read when it came out and I had read quite a lot of it and then I lost interest and I'm really sad about it. It is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. I want to love this book. The Shadowhunter books mean so much to me but I started reading them just before I turned 13 and I'm now nearly 20 and that is a long time to follow the same series or different series but you know in the same world. I feel like I've outgrown these books and I might go back to them at some point but I've really just lost interest in finding out what happened and I want to be sad about that but sometimes you've just got to let things go and you've got to move on. I can go back to them again if I want to, I can reread them, I can probably read some of her other series, just not for me at this moment in time. No criticism against the book, it is a great book, it is you know, well crafted and well thought out. I have moved on in my life and that is a really scary thing to say but it's just not what I need at this point in time and that is okay. Sometimes we move on from things. I am fine with that. And then the final book I want to talk to you about is another Eva Ibbotson book. This is The Secret Countess, which is another one of her adult novels. This is about a girl called Anna who has fled Russia with her family during the revolution and they are very poor. They have been very, very rich and suddenly they have nothing and they move to London. And then Anna moves to Wiltshire to become a secret maid. She moves to this grand country estate just after the war and she has nothing and she wants to have nothing. She wants to live undercover and find out what it's like to live like that. She wants to earn money for her family and make something of her life. Eva Ibbotson has these fantastic romances but this didn't quite cut it for me. I loved this book. I read it in I think three or four hours. I couldn't put it down. I didn't feel like there was quite that romantic feel for me. I didn't feel like it was quite as believable as say The Morning Gift, which was just incredible. I loved this. I really liked it and enjoyed it. I wouldn't say that it is her best book, but I also know people who think that it is her best book. So I feel like with Eva Ibbotson, you kind of just got to read all of her books and they are all great, but some of them are just more spectacular than others. And this didn't quite cut it for me, but it was still a brilliant book. So those are the books that I read during April. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to know in the comments what books you read in April and what were your favourites. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!